Redeemer King as we welcome Jesus on this Palm Sunday and we welcome you to our worship service as we enter into Holy Week. Uh, I just wanted to give you a little uh, update on some things that, were ha that are going to be happening this uh, Holy Week. So on Thursday, we're going to have a Monday Thursday or Holy Thursday service with communion at 7 p.m. on Thursday. On Friday, Good Friday service, it's a service of darkness, all scripture readings and a slow dimming of the lights within the sanctuary, very powerful meditative worship service. And that will be at 7 p.m. on Friday. And then Easter Sunday, 8 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. with Easter breakfast in between it, all are welcome to join us for that as we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So we make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading for this Palm Sunday is taken from the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, starting in verse 9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion! Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem! Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the war horse from Jerusalem, and the battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace to the nations. His rule shall be from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you also, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will set your prisoners free from the waterless pit. Return to your stronghold, O prisoners of hope. Today I declare that I will restore to you double. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The second reading is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, starting at verse 5. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to God. God. Please stand for the reading of the Gospel, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 12th chapter, verses 20 through 43. John chapter 12, verses 20 through 43. Now among those who went up to worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it said that it, was, that it had thundered. Others said, an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of this world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up, from the earth will draw all people to myself. He said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. 
Walk while you have the light, lest darkness overtakes you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of light. When Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him. So that the word spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe. For again, Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it so that they would not be put out of the synagogue for they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. This is the gospel of our Lord and praise to you, O Christ. Let's go before the Lord in prayer, seeking his wisdom and guidance, seeking his hand as we enter into this holy week, that he would draw us closer to Jesus. We'd understand the depth of his love for us. Let's pray. Father God, as we come before you, we're thankful for how deeply you do love us. It's easy for us to go through this season year in and year out and and it may become routine to us and we forget and to, to pause and meditate on what you have done for us. Help us, Lord God, to grasp more deeply uh, the extent of your sacrifice for us through your one and only Son. Thank you, Lord God, for the hope that is ours in Christ. Thank you that in this troubled and broken world that you are sovereign. There is nothing that catches you off guard. Thank you, Lord God, that uh, you haven't given up on us. Though we, we have fallen and stumbled and screwed up so many times, yet you, Lord God, have not given up. Your love, you pursue us in love still. And so thank you, Father, for all that you have done for us. May we truly give thanks to you this Holy Week for the sacrifice of your one and only Son, for our forgiveness. Lord God, teach us your ways. Help us to be obedient to your call for us. And Lord God, guide and direct us, Lord God, that we would, um, there would be a death to ourselves and a life in you, in and through you. So we lift this before you and pray all of us in the mighty name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
message today is taken from our gospel reading from John 12 verses 20 through 43 and um, the title of the message is seeking glory from John 12 verses 20 to 43 father as we reflect on Jesus journey to the cross for us we pray Lord God that by the power of your spirit you would help us to embrace fully and completely all that you have done for us the depth of the love that you have for us in and through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Verse 20 from a reading from John 12, verses 20 through 22. Now among those who went up to the worship at the feast were some Greeks. So these came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. So I think when we read the Bible, it's sometimes it's easy to skip over things and to not think about the setting and the context. So in our modern culture where we have religious freedom, we wouldn't think it is any big deal for someone uh, that someone might come up to you and want to know something about Jesus or somebody might do some exploration on their own and want to learn more about Jesus. But think about it, these are Greeks. Greeks who had temples to, the God, to their gods, some of which are standing to this day, magnificent temples. These were Greeks who were converts to the Jewish religion, who were in Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. That's a, there was a lot of culture for them to walk away from. The Passover is one of the most important feasts for the Jewish people as it brings to their remembrance their deliverance from captivity in Egypt. Jesus would redefine the Passover in the institution of Holy Communion, where it is his body and his blood offered for us, not the blood of the lambs placed over the doorposts of the angel of death Passover, but his very own blood shed for us on Calvary's cross so that we can be forgiven and we can have eternal life in and through him. So these Greeks want to see Jesus, but they aren't sure that they could just go right up to him. Uh, they don't think they would be worthy to do that. And so they ask one of his followers, 
Their desire to see Jesus is contrasted with what we see later on in our gospel reading, uh, where there's people who already had Jewish background, who were already a part of the synagogue, who liked the idea of Jesus, but they didn't really want anybody to know that they believed in Jesus. So one of the big problems in the church is we don't mind being associated with Jesus in our churchy culture, in our churchy circle that we might have. But out there, we want to keep it on the down low. We have our church persona, and then we have our persona that we give to the rest of the world. Not so with these Greeks. They wanted to see Jesus and they weren't bashful about letting somebody else know that. I love Jesus. Jesus and I love Jesus. I love the way Jesus responds to their love that they have for him. And, they're just, and, and you see uh, his response to their desire to see him. Verses 23 and following, and Jesus answered them, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Truly, truly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, he must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. If anyone serves me, the Father will honor him. So these words, which kind of seem, you know, what is he saying? Well, I think they were an encouragement to these Greeks. They had already died to their culture, their temples, their gods. They just wanted Jesus. They hated their life in their Greek culture. As magnificent as it was, they hated their life in their Greek culture and the pantheon of gods. They died to all of that. And in the process, they wanted to serve and to follow Jesus. And for that, Jesus said they would be honored. What they might not have gotten at that moment was how Jesus would be glorified. Because he speaks of that. And that he, in order to be glorified, he too would need to die. A death of his own desire to let the cup that he was about to have to drink pass from him. A death to his comfort, a kernel of grain, grain that would fall to the ground as blood dripped from his head, from his hands, from his feet, and from his side. That 2,000 years later, this kernel is still bearing fruit. Jesus drives home the necessity of the sacrifice he's about to make. Verse 27 and following. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? But for this purpose I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified, and I will glorify it again. The crowd that stood there and heard it thought, said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice came not for, uh, has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now will the ruler of the world be cast out. And I, when I am lifted up to, from the earth, will draw all people to myself. And he said this to show by what kind of death he was going to die. So the crowd answered him, we have heard in the law that the Christ remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? So Jesus said to them, The light is among you for a little while longer. While you have the light, lest darkness overtake you. The one who walks in the darkness does not know where he is going. While you have the light, believe in the light, that you may become sons of the light. Rich Mullins was a, a complex uh, contemporary Christian singer-songwriter who struggled with wounds from his childhood of never being affirmed by his father or felt love from his father. 
and as an adult, he struggled with alcoholism. By the time of his death in a car wreck in 1997, not due to alcohol, he was worth some $6 million by, because of all how popular he was as a contemporary Christian musician, and the number of albums that were sold and so forth. But he didn't know it. He didn't know he was worth $6 million because he had his earnings from his music put into a blind trust, and he lived off of a modest allowance from that trust. I love this quote from Rich Mullins because it gets to the heart of, of God's ways, which we have trouble understanding. He said this in 1997 before his death, I think if we were given the scriptures, it was not so that we could prove we're right about everything, if we were given the scriptures, it was to humble us into realizing that God is right and the rest of us are just guessing. Do you think that it was easy for Jesus? He says his soul is troubled. His desire was to be saved from what was to come. But instead of running, he's obedient. His obedience leads him to the cross where he is glorified. That's not the picture that we would have. That's the, not the way we would figure it out. He's glorified because it is the glory of God to forgive sins. No one else can do that. No Greek God can do that. No amount of making up for past wrongs in your own life can do that. No ignoring your past wrongs can do that. Only Jesus took our sin upon himself it was nailed to the cross with him, and in doing so, the ruler of this world, that is Satan, has fallen. That humbles us into realizing that God is right, and the rest of us are just guessing. But in stubbornness, people hold on to their guessing. Verses 36 and following, when Jesus had said these things, he departed and hid himself from them. Though he had done so many signs before them, they still did not believe in him. So that the words spoken by the prophet Isaiah might be fulfilled. Lord, who has believed what he, what he heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they could not believe. For again, Isaiah said, he has blinded their eyes, hardened their hearts. Lest their eye, they see with their eyes and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal them. Isaiah said these things because he saw his glory and spoke of him. Nevertheless, many even of the authorities believed in him, but for fear of the Pharisees, they did not confess it, so that they would not be put out of the synagogue. For they love the glory that comes from man more than the glory that comes from God. Herein lies the rub. Have we allowed the Holy Spirit to do his work in our life? Humble us to the point where you want to cry out, I want to cry out, I want to see Jesus, I need Jesus. Or are we more interested in, in being liked by our family, by our friends, by our neighbors, by fellow students, by coworkers? Are we going through life straddling the fence, one foot in the church, one foot in the world? Are we seeking the glory and accolades of the, pe uh, 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 of the people or the glory of the cross towering over the wrecks of time? Those Greeks, they just wanted to see Jesus. But others, religious folks, who were part of the synagogue, they wanted to hide that they knew Jesus. What will it be for us? May the cry of our heart be, oh God, we want to see Jesus. We want to see him when he's popular, and we want to see him in his suffering. We want to see Jesus and his glorious forgiveness. Let's pray. We want to see you, Jesus. We want to proclaim that we are yours, that you love us. 
Help us, Lord God. Give us strength. Give us boldness, yet humility. We don't have all the answers. As Rich Mullen said, we're just guessing sometimes. But you are always right. Your word is always right. You are, Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Let us confess together our faith in the triune God and all he has done for us. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have a, a time of confession before the Lord, and the Lord knows what's really on our heart, but what he's inviting us to do is come before him, be honest before him, come into his presence, uh, don't hide anything from him, run to him. It's a mistake for us to run from God, we should run towards him and confess to him. So let us, let's open our hearts and our minds to him. There'll be a time of silence as well that we can really pour out our hearts to God. So from the words uh, from, the, from 1 John chapter 1, verses 8 and 9, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But, but if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's take a moment in silence to reflect upon our need for Christ. So Lord, let us confess our sins to God our Father, most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. But for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Hear the good news. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the gift of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord, who has begun this good work in us, bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us on this Palm Sunday. And uh, as you enter into this Holy Week, my prayer for each of us, for you, for me, for all of us, is that we would just reflect, take some time, Slow down, reflect on the depth of the love that God has for you. The crowds, adoring crowds, welcomed him. And within a few days, our Lord and Savior will be hanging on the cross for us. No one took his life from him. He offered it willingly so that you and I can be in a relationship with our Heavenly Father. He took upon himself all of our sin. It is finished, and so we praise God for the gift of salvation in and through Jesus. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you, be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.